There they come to challenge it, to live on its edge, and to find a faster way to its 14,100-foot summit, Pikes Peak. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Bowman. You know, this old mountain has a way of calling people back to it. And for some, that calling is so compelling, it's become a part of their family heritage. And for others, it presents a challenge to build some of the most exotic racing machines ever conceived. Machines not only designed to win, but to set records. Join me today as we follow Robbie Unzer, Ari Botnan, and the Peugeot Talbot team as they race to the clouds on this week's episode of Hidden Heroes. Nearly a hundred years after the soldier Zebulon Pike discovered this huge summit, that they finally cleared a road, a passage of amazing switchbacks when someone wondered who could reach the top the quickest. A year later, 1915, they'd find out. Pike's Peak Highway, all dirt and gravel. Just a couple of car widths wide. Hardly a road, much less a raceway. It began sending racing machines into fits and spins just a year later. It has become the second oldest auto race in the world behind the Indianapolis 500. It's a drag race to the sky. The locals call it the race to the clouds. 12 frightening minutes with the only protective barrier between you and eternity being your skills and a favored hand of a greater power. For 63 of the Pikes Peak Hill Climb's 73 years, one of America's first racing families, the Unzers, have been a major part of that challenge. Now comes the fourth generation, 21-year-old Robbie Unzer son of three-time Indy 500 winner and 13-time Pikes Peak champion Bobby Unzer, grandson of the man who finished third in 1930, Jerry Unzer, prepares for the 1989 climb, carrying on the family tradition. Today, Bobby Unzer is a proud observer 63 years later. He's just plain good up here. I think in the long haul, he's going to be the fastest Unzer up here. And incidentally, that's going to mean, that's going against me. He's going to take it away from Daddy, you know? <laughs> Just like the other Unzers have done for decades. Robbie Unzers' attempt will be in a radically prepared 650-horsepower Peugeot, a car created for rallying that has won the Paris-Dakar and now takes on the mountain that in motoring stands as grand as the Everest. In France, everybody knows about it. Uh, in Germany, in Italy, in England, lots of people know about it. And uh, of course, Peugeot uh, is involved on the commercial side with a 505 and with a 405. And um, we thought it was a good help for our branch in United States to come and to participate to the hill climb. And so it's a must that Peugeot Talbot win and set records in the process. But this mountain with its 160 different turns will have something. The view off Pikes Peak is absolutely breathtaking. But the breath of those who challenge it is already taken as they battle the climb, constantly struggling, their hands furiously at work, living and driving on the edge. Ah, oh, it takes a driver to run Pikes Peak here. It, it, has to have an attitude that's different than a lot of races. Has to really like to be scared a lot because the place is dangerous and has a lot of bad drop-offs. And if a guy doesn't want to go through that, he has no business coming here. You have to find the limits of yourself. You have to find the limits of a car. You have to find the limits of what's going on. And you have to adapt. The road changes a lot. Uh, you have to change a lot. You have to always keep thinking in your head of new ways to become faster, of, of new ways to get around that corner. Of, even when you think you're there, you got to think of a new way. Robbie first came to this mountain as a child to watch brother Bobby Jr. try it in 1976. What I remember, I remember about the first three corners. And the next year, I remembered the first eight corners. And then the next year, I remembered about the first 12 corners. And every year, I remembered another section. I remembered another part. And then every year, between the races, all I did was think about those corners and dream that I was running them. It runs in the family, that same dream of conquering what is sometimes referred to as Unzer's Mountain. 
Ever since the Unzer family moved to Colorado Springs in 1931, they've dreamed that dream, focused on that peak. When we were really young kids, you know, like, say, eight years old, ten years old, for sure, at least by ten years old, we would just talk and dream and play of running Pikes Peak. And that's awfully young to be dreaming about something, and we did. When Robbie drove his homemade racer to victory here in 1988, it was the 30th win among seven different unders on this mountain. It's no wonder half of the Pikes Peak Museum is filled with unzer memorabilia. The other half of that museum could be 480 miles south in the Unzer home in Albuquerque. Racing is a way of life to this family, even at play. Some are our winner, they're racing to win. The family's very competitive with each other, and I think that's what uh, uh, really brings a lot uh, 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 the meaning and the competitiveness and the love for racing comes from that competitiveness among each other. They're such a large family, there's so much competitiveness within us, you know? I mean, you ought to see us riding snowmobiles or bikes. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, we're, just, we're just really competitive, and we have a I mean, desire to win. All that winning and competition within the family provides a boundless resource. There's so much experience. I mean, I look at my father, my uncle, both uncles, my Uncle Louie, my Uncle Al, my dad, Al Jr., my brother, and it's just amazing at the experience that's there. Uh, I think he's inherited an awful lot of his grandfather, my dad, in that he's able to decipher things and, and able to not have such a big communication gap. I see as a father, he's just an exceptional son. And then I see as a, as a person that watches motor racing, I see a person has a lot of desire, a lot of self-motivation that I very seldom see in anybody. With that desire and motivation, Robbie dominated the American IndyCar Series, winning 13 of 16 races. It was to that bloodline, along with Robbie's 1988 class victory here at Pikes Peak, that impressed Peugeot. Well, he brings his, uh, his spirit, his uh, willingness to, to do well. I am very impressed the way he wants to learn slowly the things. Uh, he's very mature for his age. He wants to make his future in motor racing as the whole family did in the uh, highest level of motorsport, uh, but uh, mainly in the States. And I think he wants to see if there are alternative for him to go to Europe. So we never know, but it might be a step. It's pretty much the best chance, the best car I've driven since I've been driving. And uh, I'm I feel really fortunate that, uh, that John Todd and the team has given me the chance or had the faith in me to even do this. His teammate, but truly his toughest foe, is Ari Botnan, the veteran world rally champion from Finland. Such a contrast to the young bachelor, Robbie Unzer. Botnan is 16 years his elder, married and a father of three girls. Just generally when we have been driving together, I mean, trying to assure that there's no pressure on him and just take it relaxed. And, and uh, when we have been driving together up the mountain, just, you know, I tell which gears I use and, and just generally uh, try to uh, relieve any pressure if there is. And he has done very well indeed so far, very well. And my teammate Ari Vatnan is, is super, super fast and uh, he's really hard to beat and he's teaching me a lot of things. Uh, he's really good. He's, He's a lot better than uh, I think I thought or anybody else thought he was. He's, he's a good, good man, and he's a, he's a nice guy. And I've learned a lot from him, and I think I'm, I'm doing a good job of just kind of gaining and getting used to things. Ari is also the record holder here, the man whose 1988 mark Robbie will try to beat. Just 10 minutes, 47 and 2200 seconds, half the amount of time the first winner, Ray Lentz, ran it in 1916 road with all of its mystery and danger is the same and the time has come to test it again Talbot team arrives Friday morning before daybreak as thousands of fans make their way to Glen Cove half the distance to the summit and the finish line during qualifying 
They're sent out, one by one, six different classes fighting for 63 starting positions on Sunday. Since the view from the base is limited, they monitor by walkie-talkie. Robbie Enzer begins to prepare himself. The driving cast protects a leg broken two years ago in the USAC Silver Crown Dirt Car Series. Another learning experience for Robbie is communicating with his entire French crew. And they all talk a little bit of English, and, you know, I get to talk in English, and they get to go, whoa, whoa, slow down. And uh, it's, it's quite comical, but in the technical sense, there's no lack. I mean, uh, we understand each other perfectly clear on what we're trying to accomplish. His uncle, Louis, who won Pike's Peak in the mid-50s and now has multiple sclerosis, joins him as they await the qualifying run. Cove is stunningly quick. It broke his teammate Ari Votnin's qualifying record from last year. The game of one-upsmanship gets serious. destroys Robbie's new record. He tops it by a full seven seconds. When it's over and the congratulations are done and Unzer's defeat dealt with, the two drivers talk corners. It's always the talk at Pike's Peak. Corners, turns, and hairpins. Just, uh, uh, it was like I said, in the corners, mm -hmm. sometimes a little bit easy. Yeah. Until I know that I can yeah. make it and then yeah. go. Yeah. But, no mistakes other than one little mistake yeah. on the shift. Yeah. Yeah. But I got my mustache, yeah. it was one of the best corners. I was just too low. Exactly. <laughs> it was the uh, last half in the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on qualifying, this Sunday's final will be another blistering run. Gleam in a glacier's eye a million years ago. Stands now dark and foreboding, so proud and tall. Colorado Sun is minutes away. Al Unzer Jr. joins Robbie on race day, taking advantage of an on-race weekend on the CART IndyCar Series. 63 drivers and their crews gather for the finals of the 73rd annual Pikes Peak Auto Hill Climb, a 12-mile journey to the summit. Robbie Unzer's prayer is not for safety, even though in the Unzer family tradition, he does fear the day and the mountain. He prays instead that he will give his best in return for the faith Peugeot has shown in him. Give them the record they desire. Winning is expected. The record is the key. We should win. Normally, we should win, unless there is a specific problem. But now what we are very anxious to know is what will be the time which will make our win good or not good. The time comes for Robbie to make his way through the flag-draped fan line chute up the mountain. He talks by walkie-talkie to his father one last time. Dad, can you hear me, Daddy? Go ahead, Eddie. Okay, I'm going to shut this thing off, and we're about ready to go. He itches to attack the mountain, but the race has been red flagged. Susan, they stopped the race again? Yeah, number six. 
62 pulled off the road. Another racer has gone off the course. Just how far off, no one below knows. It's not the kind of thing one focuses on at the starting line. Finally, the driver is okay and the course is clear. Robbie Unzer is on the mountain. There is no time to even consider what the consequences might be if a throttle hangs up. A tire blows. Brakes fail. Sending your Pikes Peak run into a flight forever. If you look sideways, you can read a W up there from right down here. And the drop-offs there are plentiful. The turns are all at least 180-degree turns. And I mean, you just go this way and double back and go right back the other way, except you're in a steep climb. And then as you get near the top, the road is always a lot slicker and a lot slipperier. And the drop-offs up there are just as bad as they are in the middle section through the W's. Sunday drive in the mountains. When he reaches the top, Unzer's only concern is the record. Uh, no record. No. Just 1.12 seconds off at 10 minutes, 48 and 3400 seconds. His teammate, the great Botnan, is on the course, running 10 seconds ahead of his old mark set last year, riding the switchbacks as he had never before. privately said he wants a record that will stand for decades and surely Botnan was on his way suddenly he slams into a boulder and has to limp to the top with a broken rear wheel the record attempt is dashed the victory is Robbie's the 31st in the Unzer family's game with this mountain over the years it's pretty amazing don't know why but this place I like it well I, I've got so much proud father in me right now I don't know how to act but you know he's just accomplished one of the biggest things that a race driver could ever accomplish in his life the record the mountain got him and as they stand at its very peak its conquest consumes them again I just didn't get in and I thought well no problem that isn't ideal but doesn't matter I just kept on sliding instead of I should have backed up when I saw that I, I went the same thing but I backed off yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. If only a mountain could chuckle, this would be its cue. Every year they return, each time with newer and more sophisticated racing technology, only to leave thinking of next year. The Pikes Peak Hill Climb concludes another chapter in its book of rich history with the exciting conclusion for Robbie Unzer and the Peugeot team. But this old mountain that teaches race drivers to be great and provides an opportunity for automotive engineers to practice their craft 
truly is the hidden hero. For Hidden Heroes, I'm Dave Bowman.